everybody, Terry here, N6TLU, in the ham shack with a sick Hammerland receiver. This is a model HQ170A. It's actually the VHF model, a very rare receiver. Unfortunately, it has no audio. Let me show you what it's doing, and then we'll take it in the shop and see if we can fix it. So here it is, a beautiful HQ170A, not receiving. Now you see the S meter. It looks like it has some activity, but there's absolutely no audio. I got the AF gain all the way up, RF gain all the way up. Looks like she's trying to do something, but if you listen to the speaker, you have nothing but a little bit of low level hum. So something is drastically wrong in the audio section. So of course the first thing I did was verify that all the tubes we're alive and well, heated up, everything under here appears fine, and if I toggle the receive cal, you can hear it in the speaker, which indicates there is some high voltage. So at this point, the only thing we can do is open her up, take a look. Hopefully it's something easy. Usually isn't though, is it? Well, I made a little discovery I wanted to point out. I watch the S-meter. I'm on the 80 meter band. Man, she's got some good signal strength on the calibrator. But of course, no audio. Now watch when I turn on the limiter. Hear it? When I turn off the limiter, the audio dies. I thought that was pretty odd. So since it appears as though the receiver has a severe audio issue, but yet it has good RF sensitivity, as you can see from the meter, I decided, well, first I'll check the tubes. I found two tubes that were really bad off, only about 20% emissions. One was a 6BA6 that was in the IF strip, I thought, ah. And the other one was a 6BV8, which is the detector tube, which extracts your audio, right? So I thought, man, maybe that's it. Nope, didn't help. But anyway, it has those two tubes replaced. Next, I grabbed the tube voltage chart out of the manual, and I went through and verified those voltages, and everything was textbook. I thought, man, this is going to be a tough one. But I'd highly recommend, before you go into a receiver like this and start cranking on IF cans and doing other things that you shouldn't, check these voltages. Because even if you don't have a tube checker, they can either point out a defective tube, open a resistor, open IF can. So let me show you what I did next. All right, so next for the heck of it, I thought I'm going to take a look at the output of this IF strip because I've heard that Hammerlands have a history of bad IF cans. So if you look there on my scope, you'll see the output of the IF. I'm going to mess with the tuning. As you can see that calibrator making the IF happy. Okay. Now I'm going to turn on and off that noise blanker. Remember how I turn it on, I can hear it and turn it off. Now if you look, that signal's not changing. That signal's going to the detector tube, right? So I'm assuming that that tube is doing its job. So let's take another look at the audio. Tucked down here in this corner is the 6AL5 tube. And if you look here on the schematic, you can see the 6AL5. There's that noise limiter switch. So it toggles plate voltage on and off to the noise limiter tube. Now we know it works when it's on, but it doesn't work when it's off, or not as well, let's say. So I thought, okay, I'm going to concentrate my efforts here, because I know that the detector tube is giving it a signal, but for some reason it's being lost before it makes its way down here to the audio gain control. So as I previously stated, I've already verified all the two voltages, everything's fine. So I thought, I'm going to concentrate a little more on the 6AL5 tube, the noise limiter, because I know that when I toggle that front panel switch, I can hear a difference in the audio. So instead of checking voltages, I decided I'm going to check resistance. And I noticed under here, there's two of these fine little silver shielded cables, and they go in and out of the noise limiter circuit. And one of them goes up the uh, audio gain pod. I thought, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to buzz them out. 
So one cap is down here, it's a 0.01. If you see on the meter, it's all happy. But then I went up here to this 0.02 cap and look at the meter. That's showing a direct short to ground. I thought, well there it is. Pop goes a weasel, right? So let's trace out that wire and see where it's going because somewhere it's shorted. So I'll get in here closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Here are those little silver wires. They travel up here into the wire harness, but one of them kind of loops around and goes out this hole buried down here in the chassis and it goes topside. So let's go up there and see what we find. So here we are topside. There's that hole with the cables coming up. They're coming up here and they're wrapping around. They're going to the mode switch. This is your AM sideband CW switch. That little cable I was telling you about, if you look over here, sitting right there, there's a little shielded cable. Now, first thing that alarmed me right off the bat, get in here, and you see the shield here from another cable? Well, guess what? It's sitting right on top of the center conductor of that little silver wire. Okay, let's see if I got lucky. Now I have not interrupted this at all, so I don't know if this is going to fix it, but you can hear the tone. That's with the noise blinker on. Now let's get in here and push the shield. There it is. If you look in here, you can see that that shield is tighter than a guitar string. And not only is it hitting this terminal, but it's hitting some other terminals. What I'm going to do is unsolder this, put some heat shrink tube to insulate that shield so it's not a troublemaker. So there it is. Heat shrink is over the shield. Everything's pulled away from the switch now, so that wire won't be a troublemaker again. All right, got it fired back up. We got some super audio now, huh? And here's that noise limiter. Doing what it's supposed to do. So I'm gonna take it in, hook it up to antenna. We'll see how she receives. Coming in about to almost 15. So here's some AMers on 40. On this one, so uh, that proves that uh, 40 meters is a high angle uh, uh, signal there coming in. Uh, w 4 fms I really enjoyed it, Frank. I have a good uh, 4th of July up there, and uh, we're going to try and do the same down here in West Virginia. Uh, N8YHP, I'll say 73s for now. Working great. Well, there you have it. A great repair. I got lucky, okay? But I did verify with the owner. After I completed this repair, he informed me that he had changed the S-meter on this radio which means the front panel had been removed. In that case, probably when it went back, it stressed that cable and caused the short, okay? But remember that that exposed shielded cable is the same in all of these HQ-170s. So if you're in your radio, take a look. See if you have that little shield close to other conductors. If so, insulate it. Save yourself the pain. Hope you enjoyed the video.